And so there's great interest in these compounds, NMN and NR, to raise NAD, but there are other ways we can raise NAD as well, right? This is sort of my interest in ketosis. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you, you should be able to educate us. Ketosis will raise NAD? It does. Are you... So there's a paper that I, uh, from uh, 2018, the title of the paper is Ketogenic Diet Modulates NAD-Dependent Enzymes and Reduces DNA Damage in the Hippocampus. And so what they found in this experiment, it was mice, and they put the mice on ketogenic diets, and they found that within two days, um, levels of PARP1 and the DNA damage decreased and declined fully after three days, and they saw levels of NAD increase with a ketogenic diet. So this was kind of my fascinating question. And then there's another interesting paper I found called um, Ketones Improve Apolipoprotein E4 Related Memory via SIR2 and 3. And this was also done in um, uh, transgenic mice, so ApoE4 transgenic mice. And when they put them on a ketogenic diet, they saw increases in SIRT3 um, along with beta-hydroxybutyrate. They gave them beta-hydroxybutyrate in this study, and they found increases in the NAD to NADH ratio and um, benefits in terms of protection, in terms of learning and memory for these mice. So the question becomes, we can increase NAD by taking NR and MN, Aren't we also increasing NAD by being in a ketogenic state? Right. And in the time that you said that, I've looked up the paper. Um, it's super interesting. It's a human study looking at um, magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So this, is, this doesn't lie. This is real. And it's in humans, not mice. Which one is this? Uh, I'm looking at um, the one from 2018. Oh. Got that one? And so it's... Yeah. it's Ketosis increases NAD, NADH ratio in healthy human brain. Oh, this is a diff different paper. Oh, different paper. Okay. Yeah, a whole other paper. Yeah. The other one I was talking about was in uh, mice and rats. Yeah. But yeah, so this, this is... Even better. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, based on that, I would say it's super, in super interesting that ketosis is going to potentially simulate or stimulate the same pathways um, as caloric restriction and exercise would. Right. And so this goes back to kind of what I asked you at the beginning, you know, like you could, um, by checking ketones between meals now for you, you could get a sense. I mean, those, that beta hydroxybutyrate that you're going to measure, that is probably affecting epigenetics. We know that beta hydroxybutyrate itself has epigenetic roles. Like I mentioned earlier, it's an HDAC1 inhibitor, so histone deacetylase inhibitor as well. And it can affect FOXO3 and potentially NAMPT. I need to find more research. I don't know if anybody's looked at beta-hydroxybutyrate and NAMPT, but um, the, I, this is kind of another hypothesis that I advance in my book that there are multiple ways to get these benefits and a ketogenic diet might be one of them. I call it living a radical life. And we actually kind of talked about that earlier because the other things I advocate for are sauna, cold stress, exercise, you know, and ketosis, these, these seem like these can turn on the same sorts of genes. Yeah, I think uh, you might be onto something here. And, uh, and not only that, these, um, these ketones, such as uh, butyrate, uh, they are also uh, relevant to the epigenome uh, because histones can be what's called butyrylated. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, and so what, what we, we've now realized is that these ketones and NAD are very ancient molecules. And uh, the body has evolved, even yeast cells, to really adapt to what, what's coming in as food and modulate the epigenome in response. And now we, four billion years later, are, uh, are figuring out, hey, if we just modify our diet in certain ways, we can trick the body into thinking that times are going to be tough that we're running out of food or that we're, we're getting chased by a saber-toothed tiger and our bodies will fight for us against aging. Yeah, isn't that...